Welcome to Issues and Attitudes. My name is Jeff Owens, Interim General Manager at WEIU-TV and Radio. Today we're going to be talking about Never Forget 9-11, Carolyn Cloyd from the Matching United Way, and Connie Jones from the Coles County Veterans Services Coalition. Did I get that Support right? Support Coalition. Support Coalition. Yeah. Okay. Can't read my own writing. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you, uh, ladies, for coming in. We're going to get right to you in a second. Thank you. But first, we want to introduce our uh, student host for the semester and hopefully the entire year, uh, Tristan Thomas. Tell us a little about yourself, Tristan. Yeah, so I'm a uh, senior sports media relations journalism major here at Eastern Illinois, originally from uh, Muhammad, Illinois, about an hour away from here. So excited to be here, excited to be involved with issues and attitudes. Appreciate you coming in. And again, I appreciate you being the host for this year and, and uh, look forward to, to working with you this, this semester, Tristan. Uh, let's let uh, Carolyn and, and Connie talk a little bit about, you know, you know where the inspiration came to do a 20th anniversary 9-11 thing in Mattoon. So actually one of the veterans that we are associated with in Coles County reached out to me I think in June. Um, she's an Air Force veteran and she said is anybody planning anything for the 20th anniversary? I'm like oh my goodness it is 20 years coming up. So I said I don't know let me ask around. Well we couldn't find anything that was happening so the wheel started turning, so I reached out to Rick Hall, our mayor in Mattoon, and said, I've got an idea for something. And he was on board with it, and we started meeting, and that's how it started. Okay. Before we get to the event that's going to take place, uh, at least for us three, I don't think you, you'll remember, but we would like to talk a little bit about where you were that day. Uh, mm -hmm. So we'll let Carolyn uh, talk first. So I was at Walmart at the checkout counter, and the, the lady at the checkout counter, she looked at me and she said, did you hear what they're doing? And I'm like, I thought she was talking to, you know, thought I worked there or something. <laughs> and, and I was like, uh, no. And she said, they've flown a plane into the World Trade Center. And, you know, of course, I went home immediately. And for days, you know, we were all watching the TV. But it was just like that was the moment when everything changed. Changed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Connie, where were you? And I uh, actually was a United Airlines employee at the time Ooh. at O'Hare Field. And we got the same message that you did that a plane had flown into the World Trade Center, thinking like everybody else, it was just some little Piper Cub. Um, and a friend of mine, a supervisor with me, we walked down to the domicile um, um, uh, room where they could sleep, and there was a TV. And we stood there and watched the second plane fly into the center. And at that point, we knew this was something big. Um, and as supervisors, we were all assigned to a crisis team. So we went from the, the domicile that day at O'Hare to the crisis team at United Airlines. Now, obviously, Tristan, you were too young to remember anything, but one of your, maybe your parents or anybody told you, you know, about about that day? Yeah, up? I mean, from everything I've kind of gathered, I've been to the uh, Memorial Museum uh, in New York City, and it's just, it sounds like a day where, you know, time stopped, and it's a day mm -hmm. where everyone remembers where they were and what happened, and yeah, I obviously don't remember. It's, it's, it's something where people just are kind of glued to their TVs. I remember it was... If it was this or the the Bronco chase where the uh, there's like all kinds of pizza you know <laughs> deliveries are just that you know ringing off the hook there and they're they're just people are just saying hey let's just we got to see what's happening here because it's going to change you know the rest of our lives. Yeah, that's for sure. I was at a sales meeting at WMCI in the back, and Bub kept coming back and telling us what was going on, and then the rest of the day was just uh, chaos because there's so many different local news stories and news tie-ins as well as what was going on at the three different sites in uh, you know in the East Coast. So uh, let's get to the event uh, and what's going to happen at the event. The event is obviously on 9/11 at Patoons Peterson Park. So mm -hmm. yes. talk about what we can expect. Go ahead. Well, so the event will start at 8:59, and it's it's geared to start then because that is the the time eastern time that the first tower fell and uh, you know we didn't want to start any earlier than that but the event is going to be it's going to be relatively simple and respectful um, it's not going to be a bunch of long speeches uh, we're going to have several flags of field uh, indicating the number of people that died at various times there it's going to be you know laid out at Peterson Park there will be some very short speeches from people just telling you know what was happening that day and what they were going through and what they thought and uh, we'll, we'll have the Mattoon Community Concert Band we'll play the National Anthem and Taps and it, it's going to be just a, a, a remembrance a very respectful remembrance mm -hmm. Can you want to add? Um, well we're just we're the day before 
we will be setting up 2,977 flags um, in that area just south of the pavilion. Um, there will be a specific timeline listed along this path, and it will represent then the number of people that lost their lives when each of the planes fell, when each of the towers fell, and then the last one is the additional lives that were counted that day. Okay. Just on your mind? Uh, yeah, I'm just kind of wondering with this event, you know, we always talk about with the every year with the 9-11 uh, date, you know, we will never forget. For, for both of you, is this, is helping with this event your way of not forgetting? Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think, honestly, I will tell you, human nature is eventually things get forgotten. You know, when, when Pearl Harbor happened in 41, it was like, you know, we'll never forget Pearl Harbor. But a lot of people, as a historian, it pains me, but a lot of people don't really remember that. But, you know, I think it's incumbent upon people like us to always do things like this so right. that people remember. Yeah. This was... This was so life-changing to everyone and I know you don't remember it but um, it, it truly was just it, it changed everything how how we saw everything we always thought we were relatively safe here and it changed all of that it was yeah how you, you get yeah, on and off an yeah. airport, uh, yes, airplane yeah. how yes. you uh, interact when you when you're doing anything we you we'd never had an attack on our soil before and it was just shocking yeah. So and, and uh, being in the airline industry, that was probably just a, a shattering on you uh, for a little bit more for you, right? That it, day, absolutely. Um, and the crisis team that I was on, uh, we provided twenty four seven assistance to each flight attendant family that was lost. You know that day, um, and we did that for weeks afterwards. We we would do split shifts. There were two of us assigned to each flight attendant family, so it was it was. A devastating loss for those families um, and and it changed how we did our work forever you know that's when TSA uh, came into being and and you had more screening and um, a lot more a lot more security measures put in place on board the aircraft so everything changed for us the 9-11 event will be at Matt Toons Peters Park near the pavilion. Can you take us maybe through the, the order of speakers and who all else is going to be involved there, Carol? Um, do you want to cover or, that? Or okay. Hey. So, so <laughs> I, I didn't bring the program with me. We were but talking I, about I, that before. Yeah, I might like, have it in my head right, by now. Yeah, so. um, actually, we're going to open with Rick Hall. You know, he's... Um, and he's a veteran. He is yeah. a veteran. Um, our mayor. And then what we've done is chosen several people in the community that had an association with 9-11. Um, so Carolyn is our citizen. Um, I'll represent United Airlines and just a few words about how that changed for us and what happened that day. We've got Jeff Hillegas from the fire department and he was actually part of a team from Mattoon that went to New York afterwards. Um, Sam Gaines, the police department will be there. Uh, we've got two emergency room doctors that'll be there and EMTs. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, just very short. Just to just to remind, yes. they're very short yeah. speeches, just to give people a feel for this is what was happening on that day. And also, uh, Major Major Peterson, um, he was in the military at the time, and how it impacted him in the field. Um, and then uh, we've got a couple of people filling in who are veterans. You know, one of the things that you said that in, that interests me, maybe in the wrong way, is as you said, you were looking for something to do. Is is there's not is there not a lot of other area. 20th anniversary remembrances going on? I cannot I find so. any. I have been invited, maybe huge, I don't know. I've been inviting people, though. You know, I'm from Arcola originally, and I'm, I'm telling people, yeah. you know, come to this. We have one. But I've been asking, and I, I don't I haven't know seen of any anything. public That kind of events. strikes me as odd, doesn't yeah. you, Tristan? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. you think there would be more at the 20th. Yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah that's a pretty, pretty important you, time. Yeah. As silly as it sounds, I mean, even when she came to me and said, do you want to help with this? I was like, oh my gosh, it is the 20th. I mean, I don't know how that well, with everything that's going on, we, COVID, the last couple of years yeah. have been, you know, a little yeah, bit of chaos. Yeah, but it was just right. like, oh my gosh, yeah, yeah. so... I mean, you know. COVID has kind of changed everybody's timeline of, sure. you know, of when things have changed, and and kind of like you get you do kind of get lost on the mm -hmm. in the shuffle in years and dates. So I, I guess that's the quote unquote well somewhat of an excuse. One thing I want to touch base with uh, with Carolyn on too is, and I know there'll be more on this on Ramin's show coming up later this summer or later this fall. But we lost a great person in Mattoon recently, Steve Thompson, mm -hmm. and we want to spend a few moments today to talk about what Steve meant to history and to the city of Mattoon. So Carolyn, if you would please. <laughs> I know it's going to be tough, but you can do um, this. You know, Steve was such a, um, 
-hmm. He was a meticulous worker. He was so knowledgeable in history, all history, particularly military history. That was his great passion. And but Steve was such a generous spirit. He would, um, you know, people would come to him. It didn't matter who it was, the city. I mean, I, he worked with you guys on things. Uh, it'd be individuals would call and say, "Hey, you know, I want to know about my uncle Joe who served in World War II," and he would spend the time to help research it to to do whatever he would he would help anyone he always believed that uh history was so important uh that that you know we don't know who we are if we don't know where we came from and he also just felt like if he could involve people in history he was great about mentoring people mm -hmm. uh, getting them involved bring, you know, i mean literally the first day i met him i was like oh yeah i'd like to kind of help and it was like the next day he had me signed up for two committees <laughs> i mean he didn't hesitate he wasn't going to mess around and um but he believed that if people would get involved and had a, an interest in the history and he could help facilitate that then they became a stakeholder in the community which makes every community stronger and you know steve was just such an incredible resource i think most people know that but i don't know if they really truly knew just how knowledgeable he was and uh it, it's it's a huge loss but he also he made history fun um, he was just a fun guy. I, you know, after he passed away, I, I just, I was, my mind was reeling and I made this post and I said, you know, I said, um, you know, I could explain a lot of the experiences I've had and I said, as could other people explain the experiences they had. And I said, because to know Steve was an experience. And so many people said, oh my gosh, that was so, that was just so right. That was Steve. You know, you dealt yeah. with him. He was just, he was a you met him, you yeah, didn't forget him. Yeah, he was a unique, uh, fun-loving individual. He was, really was, and he made loved. everything just was an experience. It really was. What will you miss the most about him, do you think? Um, gosh, nobody loved history like he did, and I can't talk to anybody else about history the way I could with him. I mean, just the most obscure bits of history. I knew that I could get on the internet or you know get on facebook or something and say steve look at this or whatever um nobody will care about history the way steve cared about history and talked to me about it that's what i will personally miss and he would have definitely been at the run for the era the uh, the uh, yes. this vigil there that yes. you're going to have on 9-11 uh, there's no yeah. doubt about it it is a huge loss to the city to the community i mean even statewide steve was involved in national you know historic he he was part of the little bighorn uh archaeological field survey i mean he he the loss of him has huge ramifications. All right. The other thing that you did uh, this past uh, couple of weeks ago, I guess within the last week, is the run for the Fallen. Yes. Uh, it's already passed. I know you, but it, talk about the success and and what that means to you and the community here in Charleston. Um. It it, it Well, we were not sure after COVID. We did our event remotely last year, and we weren't sure how that would go, but it was 665 miles were completed remotely. It was great. Um, this event honors the fallen Illinois service members who died in Afghanistan and Iraq. And so we just really weren't sure. There's so many organizations that I'm talking to that said, you know, we did things remotely, and now people don't want to come back. You know, they want to continue kind of doing things remotely because it's convenient. So we weren't sure, but we had 800 and... Uh, um, 48 miles oh, completed. Wow. People, from the moment, there's a man who always comes. He's the first man on the track. He comes from Tuscola, and he walks the entire event. His son did four tours of duty in Afghanistan, and then he was in a serious accident and cannot walk, you know, do this himself. So he said he comes out and does this for his son. Mm -hmm. And he's he was the first one there, but from the moment he got there, all these groups started coming out, and the track was packed. And, and it just, it was, we had several Gold Star families out there, and it, people just always walk away from this event going, oh my gosh, uh, that was just, it was just emotional, it was great. But it's not a, like a kind of a morbid, sad event. I mean, it's, it's truly just respect, and, you know, people out there talking about, you know, their loved ones, and it's, it's a great event. So as we go back to the 9-11 event, which is coming up, you know, just what, two weeks now, so time is uh, flying, a week from this coming Saturday. What other things can people expect? Or, uh, are you, will you, is it going to be like an hour, hour and a half? Or, you know, is, is there any details that you, you haven't told yet that you, you get an idea for? What, at the conclusion of the ceremony, and we anticipate that'll be 20 to 25 minutes, and then actually the uh, JROTC is going to lead us around this, this enclosed area. Um, and they'll peel off and they'll kind of stand guard over each one of these um, timeline events. And then uh, people are free to just walk to see the flags. We're, we're, we're hoping, and I think it will be, um, 
pretty impactful to see nearly 3,000 flags all in one spot to represent the lives lost. Um, and so the, the, the actual ceremony, about 20, 25 minutes of parade around this area, but then we're going to leave the display up for uh, the weekend so oh. people can go and, and walk it and the signs will be up telling them what it is. So. I, mean, I think the, per the point was really to make it ra rather short yeah. and just respectful and then let people reflect on their own. Yeah. That makes sense. So. Yeah. Um, obviously with COVID, uh, there's always changes all the time. Um, is it a mask event, non-mask, or, or just one of those, you know, you know individual pipe, take care of everybody? We haven't discussed it, um, but because it's outdoors, I would anticipate that we wouldn't need to wear masks, but if people feel more comfortable with it, absolutely. And, and I think we'll check with the city, too, yeah. before. That's what we did for the run for the fall, and I checked with the city of Charleston right before and said, you know, do you have any restrictions? And they said no, so long as it was outside, but we still tried to let people yeah. social distance and okay. wear masks. Yeah. Yeah, and so and for this event, is this just a 20th anniversary event, or is this something maybe that could be an annual event, or, or something at least to you know remember uh, the 9/11, uh, you know, date each year? I would be willing to do it every year. Yes. That's yes. you know yeah. that's. That's just the way I am. <laughs> we, so I do think we yeah. need to remember and, and allow people. It allows people in the community to have somewhere yeah. where they can. It's like the run for the fall, and it gives people, people want to show that right. they care, and this gives them a way yeah. to do it, and I think it's the same yeah. with us. So. And, and, yes, so, so we will have nearly 3,000 flags, and we'll keep those from year to year, and as long as we can get people who will support that. And can I just add right now that oh, we, yeah. we had um, five five businesses or entities that supported us in this endeavor. Uh, Rural King uh, donated all the flags, the 3,000 flags. Um, Coles County Veterans Support Coalition is kind of the unofficial sponsor. Sound Source is providing all of our sound equipment that day. Uh, Lakeland College Print Shop did all of our printing, the signs and the flyers. Um, and there's one more. Um, American Legion, yes. Yes. American <laughs> Legion, Post 88 and Mattoon, they donated eight big flags okay. that we can put at each one of the timeline events. So a big, big shout out to them for making this happen. One of the things that, Carolyn, I don't know if you get enough uh, credit for is that you are, seem to be involved in a lot of community activities. Where does that passion come from? I mean, you know, talk about a little bit about why you, if there's an event in Mattoon, you're, you're usually there. Well, um, I just like to be involved but I, i'll be honest when my son was killed in an accident in 2008 i'm sorry this sounds terrible but i i really just couldn't see a purpose in getting out of bed for myself i felt like my life was over but when i thought about other people i thought well i care about their lives their lives have meaning and it it allowed me to get out of bed and get out the door every day and it just became a way of coping for me so so it, it makes you a, a little bit of a healing process, you think? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You're going to be commended for that. I mean, you went through that, and then the, the fact that you're always at these events is, is pretty darn cool. Would you agree? Absolutely. I mean, and she, we started the, the Veteran Support Coalition four years ago, and actually Run for the Fall in that organization was the first organization who reached out to us that kind of recognized us. So uh, from that point forward, she's always been one of our biggest cheerleaders, and we appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Now, you said you've been to New York to see Ground Zero. Mm -hmm. have, have either of you been there to I see have, it? Yeah. Can you I have, talk I about it a little bit? What, I what? saw it, like, before they put up the, the memorial. We were there on a Sunday night, and as you can imagine, in New York City, it was eerie. It was yeah. total silence looking at that big hole. And then I went back a couple years later and saw the memorial. Very, very touching, yeah. very yeah. emotional. And my daughter and I flew out one day to see basically the hole. You know, it was a few months later, and at that point, they still had, you know, teddy bears and flowers all around the outside perimeter of it. Um, it's, it was very emotional for both of us. She also worked at Unite at the time. We worked in different departments. Um, so for us, it was, it was quite emotional. It was draining. Um, but the one thing I do remember is that in all of that devastation, there was that little church, that little church. I can't remember how old is it. it was. I think it was built in the 1700s or 1800s. It was the church. I, we visited there when we went, yes. and it was George Washington's church. Yeah. And oh, they really? still had, like, you know, it was offset with his uh -huh. chair there. And, and it's where the uh, first responders went. Yes. They would sleep, yes. and they'd get food. Yeah. And that beautiful little church was, was still standing. Yeah. yeah. 
I, I don't remember hearing about that. That's, yeah. something, that's something I learned about today. I guess yeah. I, that fell through the crack. You've been there, so talk a little bit about what Yeah, I mean, I, I saw the, the complete completed Ground Zero with, like, the waterfall and all mm -hmm. that. And it's, you know, walking around and seeing all the names. It It's just, uh, it's it's a unique experience to, mm -hmm. to see that, you know, that, that area where that, you know, tragedy happened and all the names that are, you know, are going to always be there. And the the actual i've walked through the actual museum and that's really extensive you know there's they, they have a whole database of all the names and you know pictures of them that that will always be there that families can go back and and you know can remember all of those people who lost their lives and also just walking through the the museum it gives you specific you know there's hour by hour how the the story evolved and how the, the things changed and the, the coverage of it changed it's just a it, as someone who has hasn't didn't live through that it, it gave me a, a good idea of kind of how the, how the whole situation changed hour by hour you know nationally and actually at the location we're talking with Carolyn Cloyd and Connie Jones today about Never Forget 9-11 and all the events coming up on the event that will be at uh, Matt Toons Peterson Park on September 11th at 8.59 in the morning uh, that morning. Everybody's invited. Uh, for people who can't make it, is there any? Is there a live stream? Everybody, everything is videoed now. Will there be any, we never thought anything we like that? We didn't think yeah. about that. Yeah. Maybe we can pull that together. <laughs> we might or, be able to. Or anybody with a phone can, you know, Facebook slide. <laughs> yes. I, guess. Yes. Mm -hmm. I just didn't know if that was another thing going on. Um, when you think about 9-11, is there other things that you have found out during your 20 years since, any of you, that we just didn't know? I, I, I didn't know about the church until right now, and I thought I was a pretty much a 9-11 scholar. Now I feel like maybe I, I'm not that, as good at versed in it. Is there other things you found out that are interesting tidbits about that day? That was very interesting to me, and it, I, I found out about it when I was there. Um, I've got a friend who lives in New York, so she's like, oh, we've got to go visit this church. And I was like, oh, my gosh, you know, not only was it where George Washington went to church, church yeah. but they still had a lot of artifacts in there as well and uh, you know that you'd go in there and the volunteers explain what was going on that day and um that's really and it makes it sound like that that's the only thing i didn't know i don't mean <laughs> that but <laughs> and i think for me because it was such a chaotic day you know information was coming in from all different sources and and you you just stood there in disbelief. You know, you couldn't figure out what was going on. Um, and for me, when we started to do this timeline, it was only 100 minutes from the time the first plane fell until the second tower, or the first plane crashed and the second tower fell. And it's like 100 minutes and all that carnage and all that loss. And it changed all of us forever. Yeah. Yeah. And that was what we had got to see. But there was, you know, the, 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 obviously there was the right. uh, in Pennsylvania and at the Pentagon. Yeah, you know, I, you, I've been to that memorial, too. Yeah. And, and, you know, you might think that it wouldn't be as impactful, but it is when you look out there. It's just knowing what yeah. happened with those people. And, of course, those people were so heroic on that yeah. plane. It's it's very moving, too. Interesting, interesting. Uh, let's recap a little bit about the 9-11 events. If you guys would go back and, and for the baby folks who are just tuning in a little bit, yeah, a little bit right now. Go back and uh, tell us what we can expect on 9-11 at Mattoon. So the event will start at 8.59, which marks the uh, time that the first tower fell. And then we will have a very short ceremony, some a uh, little bit of patriotic music, the national anthem and taps. And then there will be a few very short speeches. And then there will be a sort of a little guided tour of the fields of flags that, that are um, set out to you know, to um, denote the number of people that died in each event. Okay. Do you have a question? I do not. Okay, I do. One more. Will you, are you going to have some kind of marker or something that, that, that stays in the pavilion or somewhere that's going to say that this event happened? I know people like to, like, you know, mark the, the events. Have you thought about that as well? I have not, but that's a good that's idea, too. Good. Yes. But this is really yeah. great to come in right. here. You, you want to join our committee. You know, <laughs> we'll just be like your, your, your yeah. guy with another Live idea. Live streaming <laughs> and yeah. a plaque. We Live streaming. Yes. Well, yes. I mean, because you know, people yeah. forget sometimes, like, when they forget about 9-11. When you think about no other cities right now, at least that we know of, are doing anything in our right. in our listening viewing area, uh, that's kind of sad. You know, and I'm glad that you you've all stepped up and maybe people are we don't know right. but to, to commemorate it and then to have that thing you know yeah. uh, kind of uh, as kind of a, re a remembrance of the remembrance I think it seems like it could be a little bit important uh, you know yeah, in, I in agree. the scheme of things yeah. Yeah. People want to get a hold of you the easiest way. Um, if anybody wants to talk a little bit about that or volunteer or, uh, you know, help support the, the uh, Never Forget 9-11. Well, they can always reach me yeah. at United Way. Yeah. 
Coles County Veterans Support Coalition. Okay. We're on Facebook. You're on Facebook? Yeah. All right. You had to wear Facebook. All right. You, you didn't know Christmas? Well, you're, now, we're, Carol, sorry. You're going to have to answer <laughs> the, uh, the random the, questions. The random questions uh, that are not as, uh, as serious as the subject matter we talked about today. But again, September 11th, 859, Mattoon's Peterson Park at the Pavilion there, right in the middle of the park. You can't mess up plenty of parking. Kurt Stretchel, I'm sure, will have the place looking good that day. Uh, get out there a little bit early because at 859, they're going to kick it off uh, with uh, Mayor Rick Hall and Carolyn and County. So uh, exciting times and it'd be a neat event so I'm, they, they, we always do these weird questions uh, we're gonna let you answer them too today all right tristan so Please. it's your first show i'm ready i'll go left or right ladies first uh, on the tv for watching what are you gonna have for lunch today uh probably nothing nothing no lunch <laughs> lunch uh, a salad with chicken salad chicken i'm gonna grab a protein bar whenever i can that's that's quick i got a busy day <laughs> all right do you give blood i know this i do yes i do i have o negative blood so yeah all right. I do not because of a medical condition. Okay. Yeah. I have, but it's been a while. I, that's something I need to do, definitely. There you go. Maybe a tougher question, if you can remember. I know, you know, the street name that you grew up on, the main street when you were growing up on I was? I lived out in the country, so it was Rural Route 2. Oh, easy. <laughs> Arcola. <Yeah. laughs> Lafayette Avenue in Mattoon. There you go. Mine's it really easy because it's in Muhammad, South Muhammad Road. So, oh, yeah. That's a cake one. There you go. Is there a North Muhammad Road? <laughs> not that I know of. <laughs> yeah. How about your favorite junior high or middle school i know it kind of goes back and forth teacher and why so oh gosh they oh, might be listening in here a, i don't know want. if i could say that no um junior high or high middle school, school middle school or i'm looking more like that um, sixth seventh eighth grade gosh uh, oh i'm gonna say mr philippi because he might be listening <laughs> why well, what was so great um, about he him? was just well we thought he was awfully cute when we were in school oh, that was boy. my criteria <laughs> oh lordy lordy <laughs> He's right. a nice guy. There he is. Probably high school, and I believe her name was Mrs. Anderson, and she taught Spanish too. And she was she was quite lively. She loved what she was doing. Um, and we had all been through Spanish one. And when we got to Spanish two, we walked in that first day, and it was all in Spanish. There was Ooh. nothing in English. We even took on Spanish names, you know. So, but she made it fun. There you go. For me, I mean, I'd say my my favorite teachers were more in high school. But the name that first came to mind was uh, Mr. Risley, Jim Risley, uh, sixth grade. I think it was a history class. Made it super fun because we would do when we were learning like the Greek era. He would bring in like Greek food for us and let us try. We call it the Greek eat. So yeah, that was, he was my favorite teacher. I'd Anybody say. bringing in food would be great. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> easy right there. Um, did you fly? Have you ever, did you flunk a college test? I did not. Oh sure. Oh easily. Yeah, so I did too. So you're, you're the smart one. I was kidding. Yeah. So uh, a concert you'd like to see? Anybody you want to see? Um, I'd like to see Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr. <sighs> Probably the Beatles. The Beatles. Yeah. Right. I'll say one of the big hip hop guys, maybe like Kanye West or like Drake, one of those big events. Post Malone up there as well. But isn't right. Kanye changing his name? Yeah, so he's what, just yay, yay. Yeah. You know it was Oh, that's right. Yay. And he might not show up. You never know. There you go. So we're out of time. I appreciate you coming in so much, Kanye. It was nice to meet you, you. Carolyn. Good to see you again. Tristan, welcome to the show. Glad to be and here. And again, the event is 9 11. Never forget 9 11 in Matt Toots Pavilion Park on September 11th. That's the 20th anniversary. Believe it or not. Thank you, ladies, for coming Thank in. You. Thank you.